My name is Dennis Murphy. I'm the Charter Rep for Boy Scout Troop 207. I've been involved in scouting since 1991 as an adult leader uh, in the Berlin area. So there were four troops. Uh, troop 35 was Berlin's east side. Troop 205 uh, was actually St. Anne's Church. That was their charter sponsor. So um, Troop 205 uh, became the French, how could you say it, the French area of this part of town, west side. And um, beyond here was St. Karen's Church, which was actually the Irish troop. So it it seemed like if you were of French descent, uh, you belonged to Troop 205, and if you were uh, of troop of Irish descent, you belonged to St. Karen's Church 207. But then you went into the avenues. There was more French families, so that was St. Joseph's uh, Troop 210. And uh, then, Ironically, uh, the Norwegian area of town, which was pre predominantly Lutheran, had their troop. With scouting, you can say, we believe in servant leadership. And servant leadership is doing for, for others. And not really, how can I say, when it comes to servant leadership, uh, one of the great skills of a servant leader is somebody that does stuff for others, doesn't take the limelight. And when I look at the rich history, he had the backup of so many other adults. Gaston Fillon, who was the scoutmaster, uh, was kind of pretty famous with getting things done. He was a local bank president, so that hit, was his job was being the local bank president and getting things done. Now, he actually was one of the first graduates of Notre Dame High School just up the hill here on School Street. So he was class president. And through the years, if you look back at Gaston Fillon's leadership, uh, he was a doer if there was something or a project in the city to be done, he'd be the one spearheading it, and you'd see his picture in the local paper with, with a shovel that he was a groundbreaker. But uh, Gaston Fillon, he, he, was, he was kind of the guy to uh, get kids enthused. There was competition and I would say with Troop 207, the French, the Irish troop, uh, they have been in existence since actually 1930. But when it came into the 50s, here was this group of strong leadership uh, that I won't say uh, hindered because there was still a good quantity in both troops, but what did 205 have that 207 didn't have? Well, they started uh, a drum corps called the Three Musketeers. So they had uh, a drum and bugle corps that they actually used the scouts from 205 to be part of the Musketeers. And it was a big, big band. And there's uh, a lot of photographs of the... Uh, the Musketeers, and if you were a troop member of 205, you could be part of that group of the Musketeers. So um, the troop actually thrived uh, with all this uh, regalia of all this stuff. But again, uh, true leadership, they had uh, Paul Pinette was another one. Uh, he worked... Uh, as a district commissioner, uh, did a whole number of the things. He was the backbone of 205. And I would say um, the, the Troop 207, 
They had their difficulties in the 30s and 40s because men were going off to war. So it, it was tough to, to maintain uh, that force. But in the 60s, then there was a complete turnaround. There was a, a group of, of uh, adult men that were very strong in outdoor skills. And um, there was the... Again, there was this competitiveness, but Albert DiNardo became the first scoutmaster for Troop uh, 207. And back in, in the 60s, he was a go-getter to, uh, uh, and he had the support of the local pastor there. So th there's, there's, there's a lot of stories that even have to do with the pastor, Father Drapo, he had a cottage in Stratford, or uh, Stark, New Hampshire, and Father Drapo uh, was one to, uh, how could I say it, if you were French, you would speak French at these outings. And uh, when it came to St. Karen's, it was strictly English. Mm -hmm.